So the UK has got into another scrap with the EU regarding the status of Gibraltar. Gibraltar, which was left mainly to its own devices um, during kind of the Brexit negotiations and had to come up with its own kind of agreements with um, sort of the EU because the UK really abandoned it, especially since Gibraltar relies on freedom of movement as people that live within Gibraltar also work in Spain and people who work in Spain also work in Gibraltar. So that was a major issue. But yeah. So the foreign secretary has accused the EU of seeking to undermine the UK sovereignty of Gibraltar. I'll tell you what has undermined the UK sovereignty over Gibraltar Brexit. There you go. Boom. Got him. Dominic Raab said he was disappointed by the UK's proposal for a post-Brexit deal over the British overseas territory. Uh, Not much more disappointing than you, Dominic Raab, to be honest. Uh, Raab said a draft mandate from the European Commission directly conflicts with the framework agreed by the UK, Gibraltar and Spain last December. So there is um, obviously there are complaints mechanisms, I think, within the TCA. Why don't you use them then if there are issues? EU leaders must sign off on the EU's mandate before negotiations can begin. Uh, Gibraltar's sovereignty is disputed by Spain and Britain. The territory uh, was not included in the trade agreement settled between the EU and the UK last year, and a separate deal has to be agreed. So I thought they had a separate agreement, but um, yeah, okay, fair enough. It has to be agreed. Now, the EU was always neutral on Gibraltar when we were a member because they didn't want to cause you know conflict between two member states. Now the EU can fully back Spain in actions regarding Gibraltar because... You don't care about us anymore, dog. And so, yeah, the EU can undermine our authority over Gibraltar, considering that Gibraltar does rely on things like freedom of movement, which the UK got rid of. It's thought that British objections to the EU's plans centre on the nature of proposed new border arrangements in Gibraltar. Last December, September's political deal, the UK, Gibraltar and Spain gave a prominent role to the EU's border agency Frontex, but the Commission's mandate appears to have greater responsibility to Spanish officials, which they can do. The EU is in the power position here. The EU can play hardball and force concessions out of the UK because they know how reliant you know, Gibraltar is on freedom of movement. They know how reliant the, the UK is on the EU. So the EU is in um, can play hardball here if they so choose to. Positive impact. So in a statement, the foreign secretary said we have consistently showed pragmatism and flexibility in the search for arrangements that work for all sides. And we are disappointed this has not been reciprocated. It's probably more projection from the government. Once again, we urge the EU to think again. The commission said they proposed um, negotiating directives, uh, put forward solutions to remove physical checks and controls on persons and goods at the border between Spain and Gibraltar. Like I said, you know, they, they they rely on freedom of movement between Gibraltar and Spain. So, you know, if the UK doesn't get a deal like that for Gibraltar, they're the ones causing problems for an overseas territory. It is without prejudice of the to the issue of sovereignty that jurisdiction and focuses, uh, that focus on cooperation in the region, the bloc added. So this kind of just wishy-washy stuff from both sides here that you know the uk like oh how dare they undermine us the you like no we're just doing what's best for everyone but in reality the uk has given up a lot of control over gibraltar to the eu because of brexit because of the end of the free movement of goods and people that's what's happened here the mandate includes rules for establishing the responsibility for asylum visas and residence permits and police cooperation and information exchange those Um, sort of last two things being really important because if criminals do go from say Spain to Gibraltar without that kind of cooperation then it's going to be much more difficult to catch people so these things are important here the EU's post-Brexit negotiator Sefcovic said its proposals seek to make a positive impact on those living either side of the border with Spain while protecting the single market which is really important for the EU Um, the EU are desperate to protect their single market By putting forward this draft mandate, we are honouring the political commitment made to Spain to start the negotiations of a separate agreement between the EU and the UK on Gibraltar. So Spain are taking the lead because they're the most impacted on this, just like Ireland took the lead regarding the Northern Ireland Protocol. It makes a lot of sense to take this approach. But let's not forget that the Gibraltar is disputed territory between um, the UK and GB, which I guess you could argue Northern Ireland is also disputed territory between Ireland and Great Britain, depending on who you are. So I guess you can draw parallels here. So uh, the article goes on to say, this is a detailed mandate which aims to have a positive impact for those living and working on either side of the border between Spain and Gibraltar while protecting the integrity of the Schengen area and the single market. Because you've got to think, right, if uh, if you do allow, say, free movement between Gibraltar and Spain, 
um, those people can go into other EU countries. Uh, so that's a, that's an issue. In March, the Foreign Secretary, the Chief Minister of Gibraltar, Fabian Picardo, agreed a joint approach to the negotiations on a Gibraltar tweet, a treaty between the EU and the UK. So, you know, Dominic Raab can get mad, but the thing is, right, by ending the free movement of goods and people, you know, it wasn't just, you know, GB that was impacted. It was Northern Ireland that was impacted. It was Guernsey that was impacted. It was Jersey that was impacted. But I guess more than that, it was, you know, Gibraltar that was impacted. And the fundamental thing is that the UK is not in a good situation here because Gibraltar relies a lot on Spain in terms of free movement of goods and people. So they've put the EU in a really strong negotiating position. And it's simply the case that, you know, I don't know what happens here because if you allow the free movement of goods and people from Gibraltar, that kind of takes Gibraltar out of the sphere of the UK and we might end up with something similar to, say, the Northern Ireland Protocol. It might be called, say, the Gibraltar Pro Protocol. And if you get rid of the free movement of goods and people from Gibraltar to the EU, then you've caused massive problems for both people on both sides of the border, but also the people that we're supposed to really care about, the people in Gibraltar. You've massively damaged their employment prospects, especially if they work in Spain. So there is no good answer here because Brexit has once again caused huge problems with regards to Gibraltar. But, you know, Dominic Raab can get mad, but he should take a seat because he's the one that helped cause this mess. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.